Hi guys, so this is my second character in my Nightmare in Wonderland series, the Queen of Hearts, the decaying Queen of Hearts is what I'm going to be calling her. Um, I hopefully have three more characters coming in this series um, that I can hopefully finish before the movie comes out at the end of the month. I still want to do Alice, the Cheshire Cat, and the White Queen, so we'll see how that all goes. I show you how to do the whole collar, the jewels, the skull mouth, the eyes, everything. So if you guys would like to see how I finished this look, please keep watching. And if you have any comments, just let me know down below. Thanks, guys. All right, so today I'm using my Morphe 35C eyeshadow palette and my Alice Through the Looking Glass Urban Decay eyeshadow palette. I'm starting with the color Metamorphosis for my transition color, and I'm basically just creating a really bold blue eye. Um, I'm going for the look that Tim Burton uses for his uh, Alice movies. I'm trying to combine the original Alice from the cartoon character Alice and the new version, so... Next, I am just taking a dark blue and a teal color from the Morphe 35C palette, and I'm putting that into my crease. Then I'm taking my white NYX eyeshadow base, and I'm putting that on my eyelid. I'm going to be cutting, putting the color Bandersnatch from the Alice palette onto my lid. It's a very dark blue, so it just gives some depth and dimension. Just pat it on there very well. And then I'm also taking the same color Bandersnatch up into my crease just to blend it out a little bit. I'm not going for a crazy defined look here. I'm just going for a super dramatic blue eyeshadow. Nothing too fancy or crazy. Just keep blending it out so it at least makes a gradient of blues. Next, just put on some foundation. I'm just doing it on my cheeks and my forehead because we're creating a skull mouth, so there's really no need for foundation on your mouth or your jaw. And go ahead and do your concealer and all that stuff. And now I'm just putting the white NYX eyeshadow base in the corner of my eyes, and then I'm using the colors Royal Flush and Lily in the inner corners of my eyes to brighten them up a bit. Then I'm taking Metamorphosis again, and I'm putting it just a little bit in the middle of the underneath of my eyes. I'm not dragging it all the way out or all the way in. I'm then taking NYX's Jumbo Eye Pencil and Milk, and I'm creating a very thick waterline with that. I'm going underneath my waterline into my lash line as well to just make it bigger than normal. Go ahead and add some falsies, do your eyeliner. I put a few little falsies on the bottom as well. Now we're going to start tracing out the skull mouth. I'm just using a nude lip liner, and I'm tracing um, some heart-shaped teeth. She is the queen of hearts, so I thought it would be kind of cute to do heart-shaped teeth instead of regular-shaped teeth. Sketching all this out is just a good way to kind of see where you're going when you actually do start painting. I highly suggest sketching it out. I'm starting with larger teeth in the center, and then as I'm going out towards the sides, I'm making them a little bit smaller. Create a line for your gums. And then I'm creating the empty hollows of your cheeks um, that skulls would have. Just adding some little lines and details. Then outline your skull nose. Now I'm going to start outlining the chest. I'm basically just trying to do a really cool chest piece here. I wanted to look it to look pretty regal. I wanted to do hearts, I wanted to do swirls, and I wanted to put the yellow and black stripes that are seen on the very original uh, Queen of Hearts in the cartoon Alice in Wonderland. And I also want to do some checkerboards. So basically just do whatever your imagination lets you do. I just kind of went for it. We're using Mayron's Paradise Paints to paint all of this. And I am starting with these little panels right here with the hearts on it. And I'm creating the base color for those, uh, making them white.
Next, I'm taking a blue water activated paint and a white water activated paint and I'm mixing them together to get a pale blue. I didn't want too dark of a blue. I kind of wanted it to match my eyeshadow. And I'm just painting that all along the sides and down my arms a little bit. I'm bringing this chest piece all the way up my neck as well to create a sort of collared look. And it's okay if this blue comes out a little splotchy. You're putting swirls on top of it and I'm also... Um, darkening it up a bit with some eyeshadow, so that will all help blend it together. Next, I'm taking some white on the highlights of my shoulders and on my collarbones just to make it pop a bit. Taking some black paint, I'm creating the funky little swirls on those two blue panels. You can make the swirls as big or as small as you'd like. I kind of wanted to make them a little bit larger just to make up some space there. Also, painting on the sides of your body like that, or on the tops of your shoulders, the sides of your neck, can be quite difficult uh, because you can't really see too well. Fill in the hearts with a red paint. For the water, I prefer to use Max Fix Plus. I feel like Fix Plus just is more of a thick kind of water, so it just helps make the paint come out more opaque. For me personally, Fix Plus is a little expensive, so using regular water from your sink or bottled water or whatever works just as well, honestly. For some reason, though, I'm just kind of high maintenance, so. Next, I'm creating the uh, yellow and black stripes on the inside panels and also the checkerboard piece on the very in the very middle. I'm just tracing that all out before I start painting. Then I'm just taking a black paint and I'm doing the checkerboard. Basically the way a checkerboard works is, you know, uh, black then white then black then white and it's every other space and it skips. So basically the black panels are all diagonal to each other and the white ones are all diagonal to each other. So no black spaces are touching and no white spaces are touching. And I did that with the yellow and the black stripes as well. That's how her dress works um, in the cartoon Alice in Wonderland. It's the same idea with the checkerboard but with yellow and black and their stripes instead. I just kind of wanted to create my own mixture of both the Alice characters, so this is what I came up with. Now I'm just filling in the yellow stripes. And I'm also going to start filling in the white squares on the checkerboard area. Then with my black paint I'm going to start outlining the whole chest piece that way it pops out a little bit from my actual skin.
Next, I'm going to start contouring a bit before I paint on my skull mouth. I'm just using a gray eyeshadow and contouring my cheekbones, doing a bit on my forehead, and definitely contouring my jawline. I wanted to make it quite dramatic as she is a decaying queen, so I wanted to make her a little death-looking, death-like, whatever, make her sort of look like a skull naturally, not just with the teeth. I'm making the jawline very, very dark. I'm going to go back in later and add more black, but um, she also has that collared chest piece on, so it would look a little darker. I'm also adding pink to her cheeks a little bit. Then I'm just going in and filling in the white, the teeth white. Take your time on this part because the teeth are shaped like hearts, um, so it's really easy to lose the shape of hearts. For me, at least, hearts are one of the things I'm not very good at, um, so I definitely was patient with filling in all my teeth. Then I'm taking black paint and I'm just starting to outline all the teeth individually and adding little details. The way to make a skull mouth look more realistic, I feel like, is adding a lot of black lines and white lines and doing a lot of shading. Also make sure you paint the insides of all the teeth, where the teeth would meet up at. Now I'm starting to shade the little hearts on my chest. I'm just using a really dark kind of cherry color and a black mixed together and I'm just shading the tops and the bottoms of the hearts. I will also be taking a pink color and a red color mixed together and placing that in the very centers of the heart just to give them a highlight. This just gives for some added depth and dimension. You can't have too much dimension, so shade wherever you'd like and highlight whatever you want. I'm putting some gray next to the hearts on the panels there just to give it for more dimension. Also on my neck as well. It would be a little bit darker up there. I'm also shading the swirled part now with a dark blue and a teal blue, just in certain areas like my collarbone, my the top of my neck, just kind of everywhere and anywhere if I felt like it was splotchy in certain areas. And again, shading those yellow stripes. I'm also shading where the checkerboard area is and the yellow stripes are at because I want the hearts and the swirls to be sitting on top of those panels, so I'm just shading it to make it seem like there's a shadow for, from the swirls and the hearts sitting on top. Then I'm outlining the top of my neck piece there. Now I'm just adding some black details to my teeth. I'm outlining the gum line and I'm also adding some black spaces in between the teeth on the bottom. This will just give for the effect that the teeth are sitting in something like the gums. Then I'm just finishing up any other details, filling in the black spaces. I am going to be coloring that, that whole space in black. And just keep creating more lines. Um, the more lines, the better. It just gives more detail. I'm also creating some little cracks there on the bottoms of the jaw, and I'm going to be creating some on the top as well. Fill in your skeleton nose. And just keep adding more details. Honestly, a skull mouth looks way better if you just keep adding more 
shadows and more highlights basically. I'm also filling in my gums pink and I'm going to be adding a lot of dark pink and dark red shadowing to them just to make them look a little bit more realistic. I'll also be taking some black shadows in there and taking some black paint just to create some little lines where the gums would be pushed out because the teeth are sitting in them. Some more lines on the bottom there. Now I'm just taking some dark gray shadow and shading in between the teeth where the lines are at. I'm just doing a lot of shading basically just to give for some dimension like these teeth are sitting in my face. I'm creating some more cracks here. I just thought they gave a cool effect to the whole look. Then I'm taking some brown and gray shadow mixed together and I'm shading the teeth just to make them look a little bit more realistic and not so flat. And I'm taking NYX's white liquid liner and I'm highlighting some spots and I'm also putting some highlights on the teeth as well underneath the jaw lines and around the hollows of the mouth. Taking a dark gray and a black shadow I'm just contouring and shading the mouth more. I want to make the mouth look really dark compared to the rest of my face, so darkening up the hollows of your cheekbones, putting some on your ears a little bit, and definitely darkening up the jawline with black. I wanted the jawline to be super dark. Sorry I'm so far away from the camera too, sometimes when I get in my zone I don't really see what I'm doing too much. Now I'm just putting a heart and a Q in the middle of my forehead for the Queen of Hearts. Make sure when you do letters in the mirror too, you do them backwards to what you would usually do. Next I'm just doing some little red dots for added definition. I'm just putting them kind of in random spaces on the white panels there. Little details make everything come together, I feel like, so any little details that you think might look cool, go ahead and add them. Next, I'm shading the collared part so it looks like the collar is actually sitting on top of my skin and is like a piece of clothing, basically. I'm starting with a brown color, then I'm going back into certain areas and adding some black. Now I'm just taking some white lash glue and I'm placing some dots so I can put some little gemstones. I let the lash glue dry for about 30 seconds to a minute before adding any little jewels. I usually use tweezers for this but I couldn't find them so I just stuck them to my finger and placed them accordingly. And I also did a few jewels um, in the middle of my forehead and on the sides of my eyes. I did yellow ones on the sides there to match my crown and the yellow on my collar just to bring it all together basically. But after the jewels, that's basically it. You can go through and darken up some lines with your black paint, but that's about all there is to it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and stay tuned for the next few characters in my series.